All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome to the NAR Town Hall meeting. My name is Todd Schwime and I will be the moderator for this webinar. I have a few housekeeping items to take care of prior to getting started. Uh, we have 126 registered attendees for this evening, uh, which is a really good showing. So thank you to everyone for uh, attending. Uh, the webinar is open to all NAR members, uh, junior, lead, leader, and senior will be attending tonight. Uh, NAR President John Hock Hockheimer will be the host for this evening. Once John has completed his presentation, there will be time for a question and answer session. Questions will be fielded from the Q&A box only, not from the chat. So it's important if you've got uh, comments or questions that they go in the Q&A. Uh, chat is intended for members to visit amongst themselves. Uh, we will try to answer technical difficulties in the chat as well. Um, for all of our attendees, tonight's webinar will work best in gallery view. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to John. Thanks, Todd. And just a uh, real quick check, you can see my slides, Todd? Yes, looks good. Okay. So, um, hi, this is John Hockheimer, president of the, of the National Association of Rocketry. Um, I wanna thank all of our members who have chosen to participate and, and spend some time with us. Um, first order of business, I need a motion from one of the board members to open up the meeting of the association. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. 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 Okay, thanks. All right, so the annual meeting of the National Association of Rocketry is open. Um, I'm gonna start out with a presentation of the state of the NAR. And then like Todd said, we'll go into some questions and we'll try to get to as many questions as we can with the time permitting. Then um, I have, um, since we're doing this virtually this year, we will um, do some awards after the questions and we'll complete the, um, agenda tonight with the results of the election. So with that. If I can make my slides work. All right, so the, um, just as a reminder, your NAR officers and trustees are myself, President, Carol Marple, Vice President, Mark Wise, Secretary, Kevin Johnson is our treasurer, Ed LaCroix, Randy Bedway, Jim Wilkerson, Lynn Thomas, and Becky Green are the other trustees. Oh, that's interesting. All right, so, um, and for your, um, our NAR headquarters and staff, um, Marie Stumpy is our headquarters manager, Todd Schwein, does our publishing, John Bolden, our webmaster, and Ann Heacock is our accountant. Um, the buildings I put in here, we're, we're growing so fast that um, we're in the process of deciding whether we're going to um, build a, a NAR headquarters building or just um, rent some space from um, one of our partners, but I'm um, just kidding. But we, um, we are still growing fairly substantially, so um, the NAR is doing pretty well. Um, as custom, Let's take a, a minute to um, talk about safety. So hopefully people continue to realize that the number of safety risks that we have. You know, the, the worst fear I have is um, rockets injuring somebody or worse than just a, a, an injury. Fires continue to be a concern, especially now as the um, fire season continues to um, become more and more um, potentially dangerous. So, you know, as we're flying, make sure that our rockets are safe. We're not um, putting others in harm's way, other people's vehicles, that we're very cognizant of local fire conditions. We have all the appropriate um, fire suppression equipment. We don't launch during burn bans in, in local areas, et cetera. Um, also of concern are injuries during prepping of rockets. You know, we're, we're with a lot more people doing um, dual deploy and level two, level three rockets, and then we're handling black powder and you know some potentially dangerous components. If you handle them safely, everything will be safe. But um, you know we just have to respect them. Property damage is another thing. In fact, 
I think all of our payments out so far from an insurance claim perspective have been for property damage in, in some form. And, and finally, um, you know, with the pandemic um, and the fact that we have the, uh, we meet in groups, there could be a potential of somebody being a focal point as a super spreader in this um, current pandemic. So all these kind of things are things that we need to take into consideration in terms of safety. So let's be safe. Let's think about what we're doing. And just remember, it's everybody in the organization's responsibility to be safe. Um, this is a change. I never thought I'd have to be talking about a pandemic in a, a NAR town hall meeting. But you know, as everybody has to be aware of, COVID-19 occurred. You know, about the middle of March, everybody's world became upended. Um, member safety has been our top priority throughout this. You know, um, as a board and as your president, we had to make some really tough decisions. And you know, not everybody was happy that we shut down meetings, shut down organizational um, you know, groups of people getting together. We shut down launches for a while until we got everything figured out and we um, could understand you know, how to safely deal with things. The, the news we were getting across the country was, you know, lots of states were doing different things. And so coming up with cohesive um, guidance for people was um, difficult at the beginning, but as things matured, I think we've um, been very effective at um, allowing people to get out and do more meetings, launches, et cetera. Um, as we take into consideration, you know, what local concerns are. Our launches are different. You know, I'm a member of Novar and our launches now have um, a lot more safety practices involved and people aren't getting as close together as they were, but still it's a, a social gathering and um, the launches are um, being more and more successful. People are meeting as clubs again in lots of different forms and I find it's, it's pretty interesting. Our national events have been um, curtailed for this year, but we've got lots of ideas and hopefully next year our, um, our national events will um, take place as planned and we can get together as organizationally on a national level again. Um, one of the things that really concerned us as a board was um, you know, the potential for membership to drop because of the um, this pandemic. So far, and I'm knocking on wood, um, our membership hasn't gone down um, significantly. Actually, I can't tell that it's gone down at all. Um, so I think we're, we're holding steady and, and hopefully that trend will continue. And then lastly, some of our key educational programs, TARC, Student Launch Program, ARLIS, are all suffering and scrambling to try to um, do as best they can in this changing environment um, and dealing with educational. There's a lot more virtual things going on. One of the things that I'm very proud of us as an organization is we are very resourceful and, and very resilient in doing this. You know, clubs are all doing, or lots of clubs are doing virtual meetings. They're taking advantage of things like Zoom and, and other different platforms that are available. Um, I think, again, citing our, our local club, the, the virtual meetings that we have are actually reaching out to more people and, and we're, we're coming up with sort of innovative things to, to talk about that's um, been different than some of the, the tried and true in-person meetings that we've had in the past. People are having launches. You know, the, um, one good tell for us at headquarters with people having launches is the number of high power certifications um, came rolling in in June and July. So people are out there flying. Um, like many people, there's been a lot of rockets that have been built um, as people had a lot more free time um, to attack that rocket pile. And um, you know, we want to be thankful for the manufacturers who have stayed with us and, and have um, kept up with this. <coughs> so I'm happy to be able to report that the NAR remains strong. As of um, about two o'clock this afternoon, we had 7,438 members in our organization. We have 216 official sections with two in the wings that are um, 
getting ready to become official sections. So we'll jump up to 218 sections. And thanks go out to Chuck Neff for all he does for section activities. Our high power certification rate continues to grow. And our magazine is the best it has ever been. Thanks, Tom Beach and, and Todd for all the, the awesome work you do on, on support rocketry. <clears throat> Additionally, our, our finances have been stable. Our costs are increasing, and that's one area that I'll, I'll just mention briefly that as a board, we're, we're beginning to um, really roll up our sleeves on our financial um, situation presently and, and looking into the future to make sure that we can remain financially stable and um, be robust as a, an organization. We have, um, we have continued to maintain the Section Grants Program. We consistently delivered, even though it's been different in, in the way it's been formed in our partnership with AIA for TARC, with NASA for a student launch program. The museum in flight is um, still in business, although they've, um, like everybody else, have changed how they do business. But the, um, the project that, that we're, they're working on with support from the NAR continues to be forefront in, um, in their operations. And in fact, um, I'll give a shout out to Pat Fitzpatrick and um, sort of channel Pat in that, um, you know, the next big round of um, curation is about to occur with the Peaster collection. And so we, can con we could use some additional funds to um, continue to support that, that mission that we're working on with the Museum of Flight. And finally, we are committed and remain committed to the mission of the, the NAR as it's been um, developed. Okay, I talked a little bit about, about financials and interesting enough, the, these graphs really don't change that much year to year, but um, I still think it's important that people understand sort of the, at a high level, our financials. And for I'll, I'll um, remind people that um, annually, we file a form with the um, Internal Revenue Service, a Form 990, that you can really roll up your sleeves and understand as much as you want about our, our financials through that Form 990. But on the revenue side of our financials, this is the picture. Memberships drive 75% of um, our income, followed in second place by donations. The remaining um, can't do mental math, what 11% um, is a, sort of a mixture of lots of different um, smaller pieces. Um, and then when we go to the um, expense side of things, publications is our um, biggest expense and um, color challenge, so I, I won't be able to tell you the exact order, but um, our operations at headquarters, which includes um, paying Marie, as well as all the other functions that we do at headquarters to maintain that particular operation um, is a significant expense. Grants and awards that we give out, the section grants, the um, educational grants, scholarships, um, those kind of things are fairly significant. Our member services are um, hugely important to our members. Our insurance and all of the things we do to service your memberships, like your member cards, things like that, are all lumped into member services. And then lastly, national events rounds out the, um, the expenses. Okay, some quick stats of the association. Um, our membership, again, 7,438 members. Um, year over year, we're about 100 ahead of where we were this time last year. The breakdown, junior 553, leader 927, about 58, almost 5,900 senior members. Actually, when you add all the life members in, it tops a little bit over um, 5,900. About 54% of our members are high power flyers, ranging from junior level one flyers, about 167. You can see the breakdown for level one, level two, level three. It's interesting, we still um, maintain a really strong relationship with teachers. We have 551 members who are teachers. And again, the sections, we have 216 and roughly 45% of our members, at least in our database, identify with one or more sections. 
So I think this has been very encouraging. You know, again, as as we've gone through the the abrupt changes that we that have occurred in the U.S. this year. I love this graph, and it, it's kind of hard to make, but I, I love putting it together. And um, I continue to be amazed that the the downward shift in both the median and the mean age of our our membership, and you know, the 15 to 25 year old age group is is really pushing our age demographic down. These are mostly high school and university students that either are required to or on their own join the NAR through TARC and the various other educational programs that support rocketry. And you know, our goal continues to be the the hope that this group will continue to then become members later in life. And I, I always joke when I first joined for about, I don't know, 15 years, I was always the the mean age of the NAR. And every year the NAR got older, I got older as well. And I haven't been able to reverse that trend yet about me getting older. Just um, some recent board actions that that has occurred with the NAR. We continue to talk about recruitment and retention of our membership, and we're continuing to look for ways that we can encourage recruiting new members and retaining retaining existing members. You know, a big strong program that we've had, well, not, not as strong as we would like it anyways, a program that we've um, encouraged has been, you know, allowing sections to recruit young members by giving them um, certificates to for, for free memberships for younger members. We're going to expand that, and we're going to give um, Chuck Neff and the sections the ability to recruit um, both younger and um, adult members now. And you know, anything that people can do to recruit and help us retain members is is, um, is helpful to the organization. Financially, again, we're doing fairly well. We have. $190,000 cash in the banks in our various accounts and over $220,000 in assets. We continue to recognize the need for policies and procedures and we're working very closely with our um, accountant to lay the groundwork to develop these policies and procedures. And as um, the ultimate goal in that is to as quickly as possible be able to um, Put the NARS financial system to an audit so that we can, you know, really show how well we're doing and unearth any minor problems that um, may be occurring in our financial system. But um, we don't think there's anything egregious right now, and, and everything looks very, very strong. <clears throat> our insurance, <clears throat> excuse me, our insurance policy remains. Um, very strong and, and positive. We um, actually, we have the same insurance agent as, as we had in the past, but um, this year they actually, we changed the, um, the owner of the policy and the company that's actually insuring us is different from previous years. Uh, we put it out for bid and there were a couple things that we desired in our insurance policy as well as the price. And the, this new company was able to give us the, the kinds of coverage that we were, were asking for. Um, one of the things that I talked about at the, the NARCON, State of the NAR talk was at the time, the insurance companies were um, telling us that wildfires and they defined a wildfire as anything over an acre would be considered um, not covered by our insurance and um, I'm happy to report that we're able to um, dodge that bullet and um, the current insurance company covers that. That's not to say that we need to be lax with our firefighting capabilities and um, we're not to launch when burn conditions are such that you could create a wildfire. You know, one bad incident's really gonna ruin us in terms of our insurance and um, we're gonna continue to be on the lookout for things like that in an insurance policy as things change. One other note for people, I've had several people ask about this. Um, our insurance does not co cover COVID. Um, so if 
in some NAR activity, somebody was to um, become infected with COVID from another member or a participant at, at a thing, um, our, our insurance wouldn't cover that. But as best I can tell, there's no insurance that covers that at this point in time. So um, we're not alone on that. <clears throat> the, the Board of Trustees election occurred. And um, at the end of all of this, we'll um, tell you the, the results from the trustees election. Um, I think it went well. And actually, Mark, can you jump in? Um, I hate to put you on the spot, but we um, we did fairly well and did better than or at least equal to last year in terms of the number of people that participated in the election this year. Uh, we did better. We had a total of 370, uh, well, I should say 370 ballots were submitted. Uh, 367 people actually voted. We had a few folks have minor brain chuffs and submit online and uh, mail-in ballots. But still, that's this is uh, the most vote voting I've seen uh, as long as I've been secretary. And the trend seems to be going up year over year healthily. Still a small percentage, but improving. Thanks, Mark. Um, another thing that was brought up to the board and that we discussed was um, the desire to evaluate our lifetime membership policy and um, potentially offer um, some kind of payment plan with lifetime memberships. The board is still discussing this and we're trying to figure out both the, the business case for it as well as um, how we would administer such a program and, and what the, the pros and cons of, of doing some kind of um, payment over time towards a lifetime membership would be. So stay tuned. Um, again, it, it's, it's one of the things that at face value, it, sh it sounds like it should be a, a, just a simple, yeah, we just collect money over a period of time, but it's a little bit more than that. And, and so we're trying to figure out all the ins and outs and, and again, the business case for it. And then finally, if you were um, a viewer of the, the board meeting on Saturday, we went through an exercise of identifying both the priorities and um, the perceived costs associated with um, different me member services, as well as business services that the NAR has to do. And the board's gonna continue to work on that to develop and explore the services and business offerings that, um, that we have and need to do to um, keep the association strong, as, as well as um, seek some additional input from the, the members themselves. Facebook. Facebook is the bane of my existence these, these days. Um, all right, NAR Facebook has roughly 8,900 members. Um, it's the public face of the NAR and it's intended for a family audience. All right, there's rules in our Facebook page. They're pretty simple. They're posted at the top. I'm not gonna read these rules to you, but basically it's, we're looking for a family friendly environment to discuss things about rocketry, your projects, launches, competitions, what are you doing volunteering, anything else that you're associated with rocketry, all right? It's not a vendor, um, pure advertising page. We've curtailed that um, considerably. We, we believe that things that are posted have to be safe and follow our safety codes, NFPA, FAA, any other requirements. Um, we're not looking to have arguments and long protracted drama associated with it. And the bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, if, if you don't want to follow the rules or comply with the requests of our moderators, just please go somewhere else, right? And that's all I'm going to say about Facebook. All right, our priorities. Our priorities are continue to make flight safety our, our organization's first priority. We want to support and celebrate all forms of commercial sport rocketry. We always want to increase our organization's size. We support and expand outreach and educational efforts in a variety of different forms. We want to offer full transparency in what we do and allow our members the opportunity to participate in our activities. And we want to continue to provide national support to our local sections. <clears throat> national events. 
let's see, NARCON last March was our last national event. Um, we've um, easy things to talk about. National sport launch, we had to delay that for a year. Uh, fortunately, the, the host, the St. Louis Valley Rocketeers and the event director, Matt Abbey, have agreed to um, host it again or host it and do everything next May. So May 29th to 31st, 2021. We look forward to joining people in Alamosa, Colorado. And NARAM 62, I guess we should be there now in Geneseo, but um, alas, there are probably some people hopefully listening in that are in Geneseo um, participating for us, but everybody else is, is um, home or not there. Um, so NARAM 62 is going to be rolled over July 24th to 31st, 2021 in Geneseo, hosted by Mars and um, contest director Dan Wolf and the support launch directors Bill and Mary Beth Klune. One thing I want to note to people on this, and we talked a little bit about it at the board meeting, but I'll just reinforce it. We did very well this year, both in the sport launch and with NARAM in terms of the the arrangements that we have to make with hotels. With the sport launch, we didn't have to enter into any contractual agreements and the hotels worked closely with Matt and um, Ed LaCroix to um, essentially just roll things over. They were very good about um, working with us given the, the situation that we're in. And the same goes for the, um, the facilities that we have had contracts with in Geneseo. We essentially just rolled everything over into next year. Um, for those of you that may not know, um, planning for events is something that takes place many months out and we have to guarantee and lock in things like hotels and meeting spaces. And, um, you know, the hotels and the meeting spaces are in business to sell beds and, um, and seats for people to, to come and meet. And so we have to guarantee them um, a pretty substantial amount of time out from the particular event that we will in fact hold the event. Um, our contracts were such that had they not been gracious and um, recognized that everybody's in the same boat, um, we could have been out twenty-five to $30,000 that we would have had to pay to the hotels based on our contracts. But again, we worked with our, um, our events company as, as well as the hotels and the local um, groups and we've got everything rolled over and we're not incurring any penalty on that. So organizationally, we've done very, very well in terms of our national events and, and rolling things into the next year. The last thing I'll talk about is NARCON. Um, we're going to have a virtual NARCON this year. Everything about it, we're, we're still learning and, and we're still um, early in the planning stage. So um, everything about it's probably safe to say is to be determined, but the success of the manufacturers forum, the, the success that we had with the, um, the board meeting and what I see is the, the success that we're having with meetings like this tonight lead me to believe that we can do a lot of things and technology is just phenomenal out there now to do things like a virtual Narcon. And so our hope is that if nothing else, we can set something up that we can have a virtual meeting and open this up to people nationwide, even internationally, to pull in people for a, a convention to talk about all things rocketry over the course of, of several days next winter. So stay tuned. We're, we're very excited about what we think we can do with this and, and we hope you all will be excited as well. Getting down to the end. All right, so our value proposition. Uh, $62 a year, a lot less for people under the age of 25. Our dues, we're, the, we're still, we think the best value you have. The dues have not gone up in what, since early 2000s. All right, the Hobbies Only Magazine is published very regularly every other month, 56 pages, color, it's beautiful. Again, um, Tom Beach, you know, just hats off to you. you. You've 
continue to just do an awesome job with with the magazine and and Todd as, Todd as our publisher. It, it's just phenomenal. We give you $5 million insurance. We have high power certification through level three. We have US and international competition programs and a family discount. So what can you do? It's, it remains very simple. Just fly safe, recruit new members, um, have fun at the hobby, take your turn to volunteer, either with your section or nationally, do community outreach, you know, spread the, the gospel of, of rocketry in our hobby, and make sure everybody knows and understands um, that we have things like scholarships and grants. So be safe, have fun, and help us pay forward. With that, let me open it up to some questions. And Todd, I'm going to need your help. Right, John, you, you're not able to see the Q&A? Oh, I see lots of questions. <laughs> okay, good. So, yep. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So we have Question from Mr. Kaplow. I'd like to address the issue about eight NAR members that are violating bylaws, Article 3, Section 11, by illegally and properly disciplining members in violation of that rule. All right, next. I would like to address the issue that I have raised before of the bylaws not being followed with regarding of testing and certification within the association. Um, Bob, you're going to have to send me some more information on that. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. I would like the association to restore the needs fixing report that Bunny instituted when he was president. I don't know what that was discontinued if it needs to resumed. All right, we will um, talk to the board about that and the section activities and see what we can do. All right, let's see. Mr. Harmon, you're not happy with Facebook. I'm not going to, I've talked all I want about Facebook. Regarding solid state. Okay, has NAR adopted the recent clarification regarding solid state switches? Ooh. For inhibiting deployment, uh, Air Star Electronics, has this been added to the safety code or other document that would. Jim, I need to defer to you on that. What's. To my knowledge, we have not adopted that, but Jim, can you help me on that one? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, John. I'd have to, I'll check in with John Thompson and, and Pat Gordzelik about what the current status is, and we'll get an answer back uh, in the next okay. day or two. I mean, I think it's safe to say that we haven't adopted anything since I don't know that the board's pushed it out, but I will we'll get with our high power committee and, and find that out. And John? Uh, yep. I could be wrong, but I believe that Tripoli implemented that policy a few months ago, so it might be a reference to that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm very aware that it's a policy with Tripoli, but to my knowledge, we haven't followed suit. Um, so, Gary, we'd like to request the manufacturer be allowed to post at least one promotional message per day. Current is chilling effect on being able to share important timely information with the NAR members. All right, um, we will talk to the Facebook moderators and get input and let you know. Um, please release all raw motor certification and retesting data. I have asked previously for purpose of R&D and S and T won't provide it. Testing on motors is one reason why the organization exists. I agree, I do not appreciate the efforts of everyone, or I do appreciate, thank you. Um, Scott, let me, um, we, we record all these questions. Um, so let me talk to the, um, S and T folks about what you're, what you're looking for and, and what our policy is specifically with the, um, release of the motor testing data. Um, I request that non-vendor, non-commercial members be led 
That's desire to post slangs conductive. They have, oh. again, we'll take that under environment. Mark Johnson, where's my 50 year pen? Mark, your 50 year pen is in the drawer somewhere in my house. So I'm getting ready to send a bunch of them out. Oh, Bob, you got a 51 year, then yours will be in that pile as well. All right, um, Bill Cook. Well, I'm not talking about Facebook. Frank, by the way, the idea presentations be available live virtually. Better connects me with the NAR. Thanks, um, Frank. Yeah, we want to try to use the technology as best we can and um, we're actually enjoying this and becoming better and better at the technology, so. There's virtual NAR manufacturer room was recorded. Carol, that the virtual NAR, the manufacturer forum is getting posted to our um, YouTube site. It was there earlier this afternoon. Okay. And so there's a link in the Facebook group in a couple places. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it is on, it is there. It was there earlier this afternoon. Okay. All right. That's all the questions. Oh, wait a minute. There is one more. I have it written down. So Bob Ferrante, I'm not sure he, whether he could join us or not, but um, <clears throat> Bob asked about would it be possible that we rename NARAM from the current policy of sequentially numbering them? So this is what NARAM 62 is what we should be. So instead of referring to it sequentially numbered to name it by the year instead. So Bob, we'll talk to um, national events in the, at the, uh, an upcoming board meeting and discuss that and we can let you know. All right, let's see. These questions pop in all over the place, sorry. Um, So there's a question about extending the time frame for L2 written exams. I did the test a week before the state shut down. They still can't have high power flights. Um, can we continue it? I'll defer that to the high power committee. They've discussed that several times and um, David, they'll get back to you on that. Um, uh, so I'll say switches I talked about. Will your slides be posted to the NAR website? Yes. As well as the recording of this. Um, I think the intent is we're going to put it up on YouTube as well, Carol? Carol's shaking her head, yes, yeah. Yep, that's correct. Okay. It might be a few days before it's there, just so everyone's aware. Um, Thanks, Alexandra. Yeah, we agree doing this video. All right, Bob K asks about member servicing of life members. I have the same question. It seems we are falling through with respect to things like the member handbook. John, let um, me go. John, go if ahead, you could let me. Yep. Um, I've got a comment on that one. The uh, Just for everyone to know, the NAR member guidebooks are sent out every 24 months. So, um, well, uh, and we change that, we change that uh, edition, you know, it gets updates uh, every 24 months before publishing and uh, then it goes out, but you won't get one of those every year. It's uh, every two years that you get one. And I know that the, uh, the life member ones, because that's a special run, I know that that goes out because I handle that one personally to make sure it goes out. Okay, thanks. Um, 
All right. And again, you can, people can keep writing on Facebook, but there's nothing to discuss here. Our Facebook policies are published on the Facebook page. Um, if you can follow the guidelines that we've created to, to make it a, a safe and um, an environment that people want to come in and participate, we're all for it. If you don't want to follow the policies and procedures that we've set up, you can set up your own Facebook page somewhere else and, and discuss them where you want. So, um, okay. And I'm sorry for the people that don't think that that's an acceptable solution, but that's all I'm discussing with it. All right, moving on. And if people have additional questions, you know, feel free to, you can keep typing them and um, a couple of the board members are looking at it. They can um, add some comments in, in writing as well as um, we do keep all of these and we can answer them offline as well. All right, so I want to do a couple shout outs to a bunch of people. Um, and I, I really want to thank our NAR, our NAR volunteers who work many, many hours to support your organization. So really special shout outs to the following. Um, Tom Beach, you know, the, the magazine is just, I can't say it enough, it's just phenomenal. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, Tom, I'll, I'll, I'll probably tell you a funny story, but my um, grandson who is six years old is a, um, a NAR member and he gets his own copy of the magazine and um, his criticism as he goes through the magazine um, every two months is he counts the number of pictures of his grandfather in the magazine and if it comes up short I hear about it but um, Tom I, I won't um, force more photos of myself on you but um, that's the only criticism I've had of the magazine that I know of so I think you're doing a great job. Um, Trip Barber you continue to um, you know go above and beyond for the NAR um, Trip helps me considerably with the um, e Rocketeer, with Trip, with NFPA. TARC would not be what it is without without Trip. So you know, Trip, thanks. Uh, uh, you know, a million thanks to you. Our NAR board of directors, you all, we meet monthly, and people do lots of work behind the scenes. You know, it's it's a labor of love. Brad Klein, our, our NARTS. Um, person that does an excellent job in, in keeping stuff that's hard to find available to um, our NAR members. Vince Hughley went off the board last year and continues to be very active in our education program. George Shile with NARTREK, John Lingdahl, High Power, S&T, student, NASA Student Launch Program. And, um, you know, one thing people probably don't know that much about with the student launch program. John spends hours and hours going through and participating in all of the safety and readiness reviews for every team on the student launch program. Um, and, you know, again, just a, a labor of love and love for the hobby and, and just an appreciation for, for everything rocketry that, that John spends just so much time doing this. Um, John Langford supporting internats and international programs for us. Again, just awesome job. Jennifer Ash, our historian. Mark Bundick continues to provide for the NAR through periodicals. I mentioned Chuck Neff. Again, Chuck is just doing such an awesome job with our section activities and, and everything that he's doing in section activities. Jack Kane and the um, s and group up in um, Boston continue to work in, in testing motors and are um, continuing to improve our, our testing capabilities. Ed Chess helps us out with section activities and provides um, a valuable service in writing checks for um, our different sections. And it, they have established a, a very good process for um, the financial security of, of doing um, that kind of transaction for us. Steve, Steve Lubliner as head of our safety committee and I get lots of 
questions and um, things related to safety, just pitch them over to Steve and he comes up with an answer right away. John Thompson is relatively new as our high power committee chair and John's taken on um, a pretty tough job and we've modernized things like the junior level one certification process. We're getting ready to roll out an update to the level two testing process and, and John has is, is worked very closely with um, Chuck and um, Jim Wilkerson to develop all these. Pat Gorslick has led our L3CC group and continues to do a great job. Dan Wolf in the contest board, Jim Filler with rules re revisions, getting tongue tied here. And again, all the other volunteers, if I missed you, I'm, you know, it, it's not that I don't va value your job. It's, it's just, um, I didn't know you were there. Um, there's just a lot of, a lot of great volunteers. I want to give a, a real special thanks to Randy Bobe. This is his last um, official board action as a trustee. So Randy's been a, a NAR board um, trustee for a while now. He preceded that as section activities chair. He came up with and really helped develop the website awards. Um, Randy, this next one, um, Amanda just told me and she said, you're working towards being a, a full-fledged auctioneer, but you're still in the junior status with that, she'll work with you more a little bit one on one to, to up your game on the as an auctioneer. And um, I think Randy, the first time I met you was as the NARAM CD way back a long time ago in Michigan. 49, NARAM 49. Yep. So well, and we we appreciate it, Randy, you've done just an awesome job with us. Many, many thanks. And um, we wish you well. You're welcome. couple more quick awards. Um, junior Science Fair Contest, Sebastian Ochoa, NAR number 108842 from Austin, Texas. <clears throat> um, Sebastian will get a free one-year extension of his NAR membership and he gets a first class delivery of Sport Rocketry Magazine. And Tom Beach, if you haven't done enough, you've also been our Junior Science Fair Contest judge for many, many years, and, and we thank you for that, Tom. Website Excellence Awards. The thanks go out to Pam Gilmore for leading this. This um, She's stepping down after this year. She led it from 2010 to 2019. And the awards go out to first place is Monroe Astronautical Rocket Society Mars, Section 136 Bill Clune. Second place, Southwestern, Southwest Michigan Association of Space Modeling Hobbyists, SMASH, Pam Gil Gilmore, Webmaster. Third place, Blue Mountain Rocketeers, Tim Quigg, Webmaster. And fourth place, Dallas Area Rocketry Society, DARS, and Jack Sprague is the web Webmaster. And they get a pretty cool looking plaque that goes along with this and something they can post on their web web page. So great job. And you know, as I go look around different web pages, we, we've got a lot of really talented people out there putting together some really cool websites now. Let me see. What else is in here? Virtual NARAM. This has been great. And I don't know how these guys cooked it up, but you know, I got this email. Wouldn't it be nice to do a virtual NARAM and from Chris Flanagan and then all of a sudden it just kind of grew wings and um, he hooked up, Don Carson got interested, Ed LaCroix has been playing um, a part in it. Um, they came up with help with the town hall, um, the manufacturers forum, there's a contest going on that's gonna continue to go on for a while. You know, look it up, these guys really got together and, and came up with a, a really cool way of continuing to do narrow like things in in the times that, that we're facing today. So hats off to you all. Great job. Lack Newsletter Award. Winner this year is Zog43, Narham's editor Don Carson. Honorable mention, Total Impulse, Impulse JMRC, Section 620 and Huvar's Section 463. Editor is Buzz Now. And Again, um, Tom Beach had 
thanks so much for um, all the time you spend judging the, the newsletters and we'll work with last year's winner to get the um, treasure trove of goodies transported back to uh, Maryland and um, the Narham section. Mark, do you wanna take over and do these? All right, thanks. Uh, double checking, uh, you can see and hear me. Seeing's not important, but you can't hear me. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, yep. great, thanks. Um, just a little bit of a background. We, we're going to announce the Canon Educational Grants, that's the slide you see, the Extracurricular Activity Grants, and the NAR Scholarships this year. Uh, the Canon Grants, that's a $500 grant to educators who use rocketry in their classrooms. So these are going to actual to school teachers in the, uh, in the K through 12 space. And this year's recipients are Alan Cox of Abraham Lincoln High School in LA, Ginger DeVillers, Plainwell Aviation and STEM Academy in Plainwell, Michigan, Rick Hagen of Medford Lakes Nita School in New Jersey, Robin Jackson of the Challenger Learning Center in Columbia, South Carolina, and Wyant May, Brandon High School, Brandon, Florida. Uh, some of these are repeat recipients, others are new, and uh, I would call your attention to the fact that we authorize up to 10 of them, and, uh, and we're perfectly happy not to leave that money on the table. So the, the folks listening to the presentation, if you're aware of teachers who are using rocketry in the classrooms who would benefit from a grant, please let them know about it and direct them to the NAR website. We do have a grant and scholarship page with complete application instructions. So that's the Canon grant. Uh, next slide, please. The extracurricular grants have been around uh, not as long as the Canon grants, and these are also $500 grants to organizations that provide ex, uh, experiences outside the regular school day. And this year's recipients are Ann Bazzano of the Foothills Cadet Squadron, that's a Civil Air Patrol outfit in Bloomfield, Colorado, Jeffrey Coggin of Heritage High School in Maryville, Tennessee, Andrea Earl of the Fundamental Intermediate School in Santa Ana, Henry Lefebvre, Big Sky Science Education Enhancement in Billings, and finally, Shem Thompson of the Interlake Rocketry Club in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, just as with the Canon grants, we authorize up to 10 of these and, uh, and we left money on the table this year. Uh, I will caveat that, well, caveat's not a verb, sorry. I will caution, TARC teams are, TARC, TARC teams are not eligible, otherwise it's pretty much wide open. So I'd ask for a round of applause, but that doesn't really work in the virtual space. Uh, next slide, please. The big one, the Glita M. Estes Scholarship. This is quite special. Uh, this is the third year for, for the Glita Estes Scholarship. It's a $3,000 scholarship reserved for a female high school senior or a college freshman intending to major in a STEM field. And the, the, the full name of the scholarship is the Glita M. Estes Scholarship for the Advancement of Young Women in STEM. And this year's recipient is Ms. Candace Doe, who will be attending Princeton majoring in mechanical and aerospace engineering. And as always, uh, I want to express my profound gratitude to the Estes family, not only for endowing the scholarship, but for supervising the judging. They, the Estes family, with help from uh, two, two non-family judges, uh, select the recipient each year. So congratulations to Candace and my most sincere gratitude to the Estes family. Next scholarship, also a dedicated scholarship, is the Leonard Feskins Memorial Scholarship. Len Feskins was uh, a member of the MIT Rocket Society back in the day, an aerospace engineering major. And he passed away a few years back and his sister uh, decided to create and endow a $2,000 scholarship to a student majoring in aeronautical or astronautical engineering. So Ms. Winnie Lebrecht is the leading light behind that. She leaves the judging to the regular NAR scholarship panel, and so the top, the top finisher majoring in aero-astro automatically becomes the Feskins uh, winner. And this year's recipient is Carice Houston, uh, proud to claim her as a member of my section, Narhams. 
She, she's a rising sophomore at Capital Technology University in Laurel, Maryland, where she's majoring in astronautical engineering. And as a side note, uh, I would, I would re let it remind everybody, she was last year's GLEDA MSDs recipient. Uh, a very substantial young woman, and we are proud to be doing what we can to assist her with her education. Okay, next please. Uh, this year we had, we had, let's see, we had 16 applicants for scholarships. So we had one reserved for the GLEDA scholarship, one reserved for the Feskins, and 10 $2,000 NAR scholarships as called for uh, by the terms of our scholarship program. Uh, this year's recipients, uh, some of whom are repeat recipients, uh, most of whom are new simply because a lot of our perennial winners finally graduated last year. But you'll see the names, uh, you'll recognize some of them. Uh, Sarah Alexander, Jenna Butler, Isabella De Lorenzo, Elizabeth Feinberg, Michaela Akita, Gabriel Mills, Colin Ruprecht, Teresa Tomasino, Jonathan Tran, and Andrew Yerke. And a virtual round of applause for, for these outstanding young people. Uh, and then uh, next, please. Uh, this year, as I mentioned earlier, we did leave money on the table for Canon and Educational Grant Scholarships. So the board voted to uh, take some of that money and award $1,000 scholarships to the remaining applicants. Um, we, we felt strongly that this year's group of applicants were all so strong that, uh, that uh, it wouldn't be right to send anybody away empty-handed. Every applicant was worthy of an award. And so the $1,000 scholarships, we don't promise these every year, but when funds are available and, and applicants are worthy of it, we will do that, are to Mr. Bryce Kempert, who will be attending the U.S. Air Force Academy, Jacob Raines, who will be beginning his senior year at Denison, Owen Reed, attending Embry-Riddle, and Allison Van Milligan, who will be starting her junior year at Liberty this fall. So, okay. And finally, uh, I won't read the entire list. I do want to express my thanks to all of the grant and scholarship judges. Um, in particular, thank you to Claude Mena. He supervises the judging for the Canon and Extracurricular Activity Grants. Uh, Betty Estes Gear. Who, who manages the selection process for the Gleader Scholarship. And then, as I say, all the folks on the list, some folks, some people uh, participated or supported more than one program, and Joyce Guzik was a judge for all three. Yeah. As the slide says at the bottom, thank you for your dedicated service. It is not unnoticed, it is not unappreciated. Thank you. All I have. Mark, you're still up. <laughs> All righty. Um, do, we, do we have the backup slides for that, John? Yep. Okay. So um, because John asked a little earlier tonight, we, I did mention we had 200, 284 online ballots. That was well ahead of last year's total. Uh, 86 mailed in, also ahead of last year's total. No in-person balloting for obvious reasons, but Last year, um, we only had a couple of dozen in-person ballots anyway, because most people who were present at the town hall had already voted online or, or by mail. Uh, I did have to invalidate a little over a dozen ballots. Uh, we had three junior members, the instructions are printed there. We had three junior members cast ballots. Sorry, I had to invalidate those. Uh, per the bylaws, uh, electors have to have been an NAR member for at least one year. We had uh, 12 members who did not meet that criterion. Uh, we had five expired members. And I mentioned earlier, three duplicate ballots who had voted online and, um, and by mail. In each case, the ballots were identical, so it wasn't as though we had to figure out what the voter's actual intent was. Um, but we did go through the member database and validate every last ballot by hand to make sure that that uh, that every vote was legitimate. And so that brings us to the results. Uh, numbers will be posted with the minutes, and they're going to be rocketeer. But our top three uh, our top three candidates this year: John Hockheimer and Kevin Johnson, incumbents reelected, and Stephen Lubliner is declared elected to the board. 
And we thank William Robbie and Art Applewhite for running. Uh, it's always good to, to have a choice of candidates. We've had years where we had three people running for three open seats and that's, that's not an optimal situation. So we, we thank you for your willingness to serve. And All right. Thanks, Mark. I think you're, you're off the hook now. No more surprises for you. So, all right. Um, that's all I have. Um, I do need a motion from somebody on the board to adjourn. Hey, John, Jim Wilkerson, uh, quickly, Good, I, I think there was one question that got missed oh. about the extension of the L2 test um, validity. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, and we talked about this a couple of board meetings ago. The test is a measure and a, it's, a, uh, um, it, it's, it's a check of technical knowledge. Knowledge um, from study can expire after a year. That's why the limit is there. Financial hardship to retake the test. So at this point, the board is not planning to uh, the validity dates for the level two tests. Um, depending on how things go, it's, it's not a completely dead issue. People can continue to ask, but at this point, we don't see a real a valid reason for extending the validity of the level two tests. Uh, that's, that's all I had. Okay. John? Yep. Real quick. In a lighter moment, Frank D'Angelo is asking, could you, could we please give a word of thanks to our non-rocketeer spouses that support our hobbies? So, thanks spouses for supporting our hobbies. And you, Linda, are knocking it out of the park for Frank. That's all. Well, actually, I like, I, I wrote that down, Ed, but thank you. But, um, and I actually want to extend it to fa families and not just the, the spouses, so. Um, of course. I know my spouse is very um, tolerant, especially on painting days. <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll move. A motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All right. Um, that's all I have. Todd, I'm going to throw it back to you.